Hey, what's up guys? It's Gabe with NerdTech. And I just wanted to show you a really neat automation we've been implementing for uh, quite a few more of our clients and it's using the AI calling for follow-ups. Now in a previous video, I actually showed you how this worked on the front end. We did the call, uh, we talked with it so you could hear that transcript. If you didn't see that video, you might wanna check it out. This is actually showing you the back end on kind of what that looks like on one of the automations I got going. Um, it's kind of simple, might be advanced for some of you guys out there, but uh, right now I'm in just a folder called AI follow-up calls. And if we click on the AI follow-up call right here, this is the one that actually makes the trigger. There is another one for the post call outcome. And this basically means that when a call is answered, uh, what information do we want to extract to that? And who do we want to alert to let them know that uh, somebody responded to our follow-up campaign? So I'm going to click on the trigger to show you what that one looks like. I'm not going to dive into the uh, post call because that one's a bit more complicated. This one is actually triggered by a stage uh, pipeline stage change, uh, which means we can just drag that opportunity card over to a pipeline stage and then boom, it's going to make that call. On this particular one, I have it uh, doing a two day wait. Um, it checks the DNC to make sure it's a good contact, make sure they haven't been marked as a do not call. Um, and then it does a two day wait. And the reason why we're doing that two day wait is because for this client, they do a manual call first. And then after that call, if they don't answer, they'll drag them and put them into this pipeline stage and they want it to wait two days before we, you know, quote unquote, bug them again. So then it makes the call. Um, this one's actually going to wait two days and uh, call between 12 and six. And then down here, when we try again, um, it waits two days and calls between nine and 11. So that way we try in afternoon and morning. Uh, but the flow of this is again, DNC, wait two days, makes the phone call right here. Then the uh, add call attempt. This is actually just a simple math operation. I have a field inside of my contact called AI follow up attempts. This is a number field. And every time we make a phone call, we just add the number one to it. We keep track of this. And I'll show you in just a second. Um, and then we tag it AI follow up call attempt so I can uh, find those contacts if I ever need to. I tag everything that goes through a workflow. And then right here, we have a condition, and this is where the follow-up attempts, uh, attempts are tracked. This is saying if it's less than or equal to four, so this actually will allow it to go through up to five times. And if it's over five times, it comes to this stage here, and I actually send this to a stage called exhausted, and then the sales guy can determine uh, if he wants to do anything from there or just mark it as dead. Um, if it's less than five times, it's going to keep calling, it's gonna wait two days, it's gonna go back up here to make another phone call after that. Uh, so this is going to keep cycling through and counting those call attempts. Uh, a lot of people don't uh, know about these call attempts and what you can do to trigger things off of that. So that's kind of one of my little hacks. Uh, we use that for quite a few things so that we can track. You know, We don't wanna do infinite actions because these triggers, these phone calls, they do, they do cost money. And so if for some reason somebody's entered our system that's spam, we don't want to just do infinite amount of follow up actions on those. But you can determine what's best, uh, but I always recommend having some sort of end to that unless it is a 100 percent verified lead that maybe they're just really hard to get a hold of. And then you might want to put them in some sort of infinite uh, cold lead follow up sequence, maybe where they just get drip emails or, te or text messages or something like that. Um, again, you could add to this. We could add in a step here. Uh, another popular thing is to add in a voicemail. You could add a voicemail and upload your voicemail. It's going to drop that recording. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over this simple uh, workflow here. Hope that helps. Hope maybe you could get some value from this. If you need help setting it up or you need some other builds with custom voice and, and chatbot integrations, we do a lot of custom stuff for clients, uh, my link in the YouTube video down below in the description goes to my website where you can see the prices of different things and uh, book a call with us so that we can discuss if you need any help. Um, I do have an agency account with Go Level, with SendFlow and with Closebot. What that means is, is I resell sub accounts for all three of those things for much cheaper than if you go direct. So if you're not an agency and you just need like one account for yourself, uh, you will be able to find it much cheaper through me and I'd be happy to help you out with that. So uh, hope you liked this little automation video. Take care. Have a great week, guys.